Good morning. Welcome to God's house for our worship this morning. The 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days after Christmas, and they culminate on the 12th night in the festival of the Epiphany of our Lord, in which the Christian church celebrates the arrival of the wise men to worship the newborn king. It happens on January 6th, which was yesterday, and since this fell during our time of worship for the weekend, we take the opportunity of today is January 7th, to celebrate the Festival of Epiphany. The worship folder is the order of service is in there uh, for this morning. This weekend we also take the opportunity to install those who are elected into positions of leadership here at our congregation. All positions were elected this year because of the uh, acceptance of the new constitution and bylaws. We've installed uh, people into these positions throughout the services last night and this morning and uh, there will be a few here in this service. The whole list of those uh, who are uh, up, the whole list of our officers and the positions to which they have been elected and are being installed today is printed in the worship folder so you can see all of their names in there although only a couple of them, few of them will be at this service. Another, just a quick little correction note, when we come to the song of praise after confession of the absolution, the songs of thankfulness and praise, there's a little bit of a typo uh, in the second to last line of stanza one. Anthems be to you addressed. I told first service that and they still sang it wrong. Anthems be to you addressed, not anthems by to you addressed, anthems be to you addressed, God and man made manifest. Our opening hymn is printed in the service folder. Let's join to sing brightest and best to the stars of the morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Please be seated. By the leading of a star, you once made known to the nations your one and only Son. Guide us also who know him now by faith to come at last to the perfect joy of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God speaks to our hearts in his word. First he speaks to the prophet Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is dawning upon you. Look, the darkness covers the earth and deep darkness covers the peoples. But the Lord will dawn upon you and his glory will be seen over you. Nations will walk to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Look up. Look all around and see. All of them are gathered. They come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters will be carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will race with excitement and burst with joy. For the great riches of the sea will be delivered to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Caravans of camels will cover your land. Young camels from Midian and Ephah. All of them from Shiva will come. 
They will carry gold and incense. And they will announce the good news of the Lord's praises. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for the day is Psalm 72, for which we sing. Hymn number 84 in the hymnal, Jesus shall reign where the sun. Second reading is from Ephesians chapter 3. Surely you have heard of the administration of God's grace given to me for you. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. When you read this, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. This mystery was not made known to people in past generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that in Christ Jesus the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and people who also share in the promise of the gospel. I became a servant of this gospel in keeping with the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. To me, even though I am the very least of all the saints, was given this grace to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to enlighten everyone about the administration of this mystery. In past ages, this mystery remained hidden in God who created all things. He did this so that through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God in the heavenly places might now be made known to the rulers and authorities. This was done according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
In him we can freely approach God with confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Alleluia. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 2. Glory be to you, O Lord. Also the sermon text for the weekend. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, when Herod was king, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and had come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was alarmed, and all Jerusalem with him. He gathered together all the people's chief priests and experts in the law. He asked them for the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, because this was written through the prophet, You, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report to me, so that I may also go and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stood, over, still, stood still over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with overwhelming joy. After they went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Since they had been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is number 79 in the hymnal, How Lovely Shines the Morning Star.
May the words that I speak, O Lord, and all the thoughts of our hearts and minds be pleasing in your sight. Our rock and our redeemer, amen. There is so much we don't know about the wise men. How many were there? A nativity you have at home that you probably, if you haven't taken it down already, will take it down soon. There are three of them, right? They have names given to them as well. I can't remember. I know one is Belshazzar. I don't know the rest of them. Of course, that's only based on the three gifts that they bring. There could have been 20 of them, for all we know. Where do they come from? You are aware that the East is a pretty big place, isn't it? It goes a long ways until it ends up becoming West. We have a fairly decent idea considering what they brought. What are they? We sing, we three kings of Orient. Well, they're not really kings because Herod did not treat, treat them diplomatically as such. When and where did they find Jesus? Again, that nativity you have has them coming up to the stable while the shepherds are still there, and the oxen and the ducks and the geese and the snow on the cold winter's day. No, that's probably when they didn't show up either. Where? The text tells us at a house. Mary had to stay put for at least 40 days, according to Jewish Old Testament law, for her purification. Herod was probably doing what Herod usually does in overkill as he ordered the slaughter of the innocents two years and younger, but that could be the time frame that we're looking at for the arrival of the wise men. Finally, all this we don't know just doesn't matter. What matters is that God gives us in the celebration of the epiphany of his only son, Jesus one final wondrous divine gift. Ah, today God gives us wisdom. The Magi knew who they were looking for. The one born king of the Jews. The only question in their mind was, oh, where are we going to find him? And imagine how disappointed they were when they arrived in Jerusalem, the capital of the Jews, to find that no one there knew anything about this one born king of the Jews. You would think one born in royalty, the whole city would have been celebrating this, but the only thing making the Jerusalem nightly news seemed to be their arrival because now Herod's upset about something and all the people are wondering. It's even remarkable that the chief priests and the teachers of the law, had they actually listened to the prophet Micah, they would have already been there worshiping this newborn king, but for him they were not looking. And so today God gives us a wondrous gift to know exactly what to look for. And this is so important. Because you can see that humanity will always look in the wrong places for the wrong thing. That is why they arrived in Jerusalem, right? If one is going to be king, where is he going to be born? But the capital. He's going to be wearing golden diapers. I mean, just think in, in, in our day and age what happens when any news comes from the United Kingdom about the royal family. Even if, they, if one of them gets engaged... Huh? And yet here, nothing. They didn't know where to look. But God told them exactly where the king was to be born. God gives us wisdom today, doesn't he? To know exactly what to look for, to look exactly where God says. And what do we find? Wisdom finds that God is doing things exactly as God always does them. 
No, he's not born in the capital. No, he's not wearing golden diapers either. Where is he but in that humble city of David in Bethlehem? Here is God doing what God has done as we've celebrated at Christmas. Always doing his work in simplicity and humility. This is wisdom. To see again exactly how God does it all. Humanity would never, never see this. And, and never want this either. Because what does humanity want? Humanity wants splendor. It wants glory. It wants golden diapers. It doesn't want what God has to offer in the way that God offers it. And so then foolishness would miss it. And everything that comes along with it. And so thank God he gives us wisdom this day. To know what to look for. So that we don't miss Jesus now and we won't miss him in his life that we now see him live. Here and yet in the arms of his mother, next week standing in the Jordan River in the waters of baptism in which we stand in, in ours. And in simplicity and humility he will live his life here on earth. And if we don't know that this is how God does it, then we will miss it all. Especially when we arrive at the cross. Where we see utter humility. Something that is not wanted. God gives us wisdom today. To see and to know. How God wins our salvation. In simplicity. And in humility. And God gives us wisdom then. To expect always that this is how God is going to do that. Now why is that so important? Not just so that we don't miss it, but so that we don't fall into the trap of wanting Jesus to be something else. We saw the difference between the Magi and Herod, didn't we? Well, I guess we didn't see a difference, right? They both wanted to do the same thing. The Magi came to worship the one who has been born king of the Jews. And after Herod found out this news, when well, he sent them on their way, make sure you report back to me because what does Herod want to do? Because it's such a cool thing to do, to worship the king of the Jews. So he says, but of course he's lying. He wanted only to kill the king of the Jews. And he wanted it desperately. The wise men went and worshipped the one they were looking for. So important this wisdom that God teaches us so that when we come to Jesus, we find him exactly for who he is and what he has come to do. This so important line. In a popular movie a few years ago, and some of you may know what I'm talking about as I explain it, there was this particular room. And this room would become whatever you wanted it to be or whatever you needed it to be in that moment. So if you, wanted, if you needed a bathroom, this room would become for you a bathroom. If you needed a meal, this room would become for you a restaurant. If you needed to work out, this room would become for you a gymnasium. Now just imagine if this is the way it was as we come to find Jesus. If he was to be the one that I wanted or that, that you needed for your own particular life, we'd all come and gather and find him to be something different. Something he has not come to be. But then what is it that we often want? And that we often see that we so desperately need? So often earthly things, right? Some of them common to us, all of us. But likely as we would come with all our earthly needs and wants and desires, we would come for something different, each and every one of us. And we would come in desperation, as Herod had, to want Jesus to be this, and not what he has come to be or who he has come to be. And in foolishness, we would simply walk out the door. 
that God gives us wisdom today at our Lord's Epiphany. To come with the wise men and to find Jesus for what he is, a king, a savior for all. Epiphany is often called the Gentiles' Christmas. In fact, half the Christian church, the eastern half of the Christian church, celebrates Epiphany on the 6th, but Christmas on the 7th of January. The wise men are the first of us to come to worship the Savior. God gives us wisdom to see Jesus as a Savior for all. And if for all, then mine. God gives us wisdom to come here and see in simplicity, in simplicity and in humility and in the most unlikely place and in the most unlikely circumstances, my Savior. For sin that I know so well in my life that might be common with some, but it is my sin that I know so well. And wisdom that has brought me here brings me along with that guilt and with that shame. And here finds the place where there is one for all of us, a Savior. Oh, God gives us a divine gift today in this wisdom, doesn't he? And when we come to find him, look at what wisdom does. Wisdom knows how to worship the Savior King. Of course, the wise men bring their treasures, the gold, the incense, and the myrrh. And many people have, have, have put different meanings to them. The gold means this, the incense means that, the myrrh means the other thing. But finally, there's just one thing we see clearly here about these gifts. These gifts are truly fit for the one who is being worshipped. This is how wisdom knows how to worship. Wisdom worships in a way that is truly fitting for the one being worshipped. And, and what do we have? Who do we have before us but our Savior and our King? So we need to ask ourselves as we come to Him at His epiphany. What do I offer that is fit for this Savior King? What is most valuable to me and I'll tell you now, it's not a dollar amount. It's not an earthly treasure. It's not an amount of time. It's not how many times I can look at my calendar and check off when I worshipped or how many times I prayed. What is most valuable to us? That is the only thing fit for Him. Ourself. All of us, all of our being, all of our doing, all of our living, all that he has given us, that is worship, that is fit for this one who is our Savior King. And so wisdom that God gives us today knows how to worship. And did you see how the wise men worship? As they brought their treasures, that star moved and stood still. And you saw how they came now. You cannot fit the word joy into one sentence more times than in that one. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with the overwhelming, great rejoicing joy. And this joy is ours as well as we come with them to find our Savior. Wisdom knows how to worship in joy. Because when wisdom comes to worship, wisdom sees where the true treasure is in worship. The greatest treasure is not in my presence. It's not in what I offer or what I do. 
When I come, wisdom sees the true treasure. There's an infant in the arms of his mother. There wisdom sees. A life now just beginning that will be lived in perfect obedience for me. Wisdom sees the treasure that is his holy precious blood. That now flows through him which will flow from his wounds and the cross for my sins. Wisdom sees the true treasure. And that this one who has come from heaven to earth as our Savior King still comes to us from earth to heaven. In what ways? In simplicity and humility. In ways that we can treasure. <coughs> Where God packs all of his glory and all of forgiveness and all of salvations in remarkable, miraculous ways like with water and in bread and in wine. This is true treasure. Wisdom sees the treasure. And the one who has come from heaven's throne to be king here on earth is the same one who rules this day from heaven's throne for us. And as he has come from heaven to earth, he will take us from earth to heaven. And there give us a part of his glorious reign for all eternity. Oh, wisdom knows how to worship. What a great gift God has given us to bring to an end our Christmas celebration this year. So wondrous and lovely, divine. Wisdom. Wisdom that knows what to look for. Wisdom that expects God to do everything God's way. Wisdom that sees a Savior King. Wisdom that knows how to worship. What a wondrous gift God has given us. Wisdom that finds Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And who calls you his faith, he will do it. Amen. We confess our Christian faith with the second article of the Apostles' Creed and the explanation from the Catechism. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from death, and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. Please be seated.
Dear friends in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his body, the Holy Christian Church. Through word and sacrament, you are nurtured in this Christian faith. You have now been selected for positions of service to our Lord on behalf of this congregation. The Lord is entrusting you with this office, which you are to carry out as his servants according to his will. St. Paul wrote concerning such service to the church, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. The Lord seeks faithfulness from all who serve him. As scripture says, it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. The Lord does not seek from us what he has not given us. But when he does give a gift, his will is that we use it faithfully for the glory of his name and for the benefit of his church. You are also as servants of Jesus Christ and workers of this congregation to set for your own families and for the whole family of Christ the example of a Christian life. Make the word of God your foundation and guide, search daily for comfort and instruction. So that the congregation may be assured of your willingness to serve, I ask you in the presence of God and of this congregation, will you diligently and faithfully carry out the offices entrusted to you according to the ability which God has given to you? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. So I install you into your offices in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joe Bardas, our congregation vice president and leader of adult discipleship. Rich Blauvelt, our leadership for worship. Corey Schmucke, our leadership for outreach. And Tim Westerhaus, our leadership for the property management of our church. And may God grant you his Holy Spirit and give you wisdom and strength to carry out your duties to his glory and for the good of his people. Now, members of grace, I urge you to regard these fellow believers as servants of our Lord Jesus Christ and as his gifts to us as his church. Pray for them, support them in their service, and help them so that through the gospel ministry of our congregation, more people will be reached for Christ and for his kingdom. Now, go then and give yourself fully to the work the Lord has given to you because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for all according to their needs. We come to you, Holy Father, with great joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we beg you to accept and bless the prayers and offerings we bring even as you were pleased with the gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh offered to your Son by the Magi of old. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, your holy church. Watch over her and guide her. Grant her peace and unity throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, our synod president, our district, district presidents, and all pastors, teachers, and servants of the church. Grant them to hold and teach the faith that comes to us from the holy prophets and apostles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, our president, our public servants, and all in our armed forces. Guide, bless, protect, and uphold them in honor. Bring all nations into the way of peace and justice. In your kindness and love, grant us seasonable weather and an abundance of the fruits of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, all who suffer for your name, all who are in prison, the hungry and ill-clad, the poor and the lonely, those who travel and all who cry out to you in their time of need. Take each hurting heart under your tender care and grant them your peace and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, all who are gathered here before you are living in true God. We pray for our well-being and redemption. Order our days in your peace. Deliver us from the danger of eternal death and number us among your chosen flock. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, in communion with the whole church, we give you thanks for your saints, in whom you have given us a mirror of your mercy and grace. This holy day, we especially thank you for the Magi, the first fruits of the Gentiles, to kneel and worship before your Son. Give us grace to walk before you with faith like theirs, and grant us a share in their heavenly fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through him and with him and in him, all honor and glory is yours, O God, the Father Almighty. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Taught by our Lord, and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and keep you. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 83, As with Gladness Men of Old. <laughs> 